This tutorial is going to talk about deriving something I call the master E equation. Here's a sort of overview of where we're headed. Maxwell's equations don't need much explanation. And they're sort of the central laws of physics that govern everything that's going on in this class. We typically think of Maxwell's equations in terms of the curl and uh, divergence of the electric and magnetic field. But one thing we studied earlier in this class doing dipole radiation is that you can recast the electric and magnetic fields as potentials, a scalar potential psi and a vector potential A, which are related back. They are a way of calculating E and B once you know psi and A. And something else that we've done in this course is plug psi and A into the Maxwell relations for E and B. And when you do that and combine the equations together, instead of just single derivatives, divergences and curls, you can get a second order equation with double derivatives in time and space. And we came up with this equation that you're seeing here. And I'm putting it on here to emphasize it's really a pair of equations for psi and for a. And that it's got some operations on here that you've seen a lot in your optics studies if you've done them. Because you've got a second derivative in space, namely a del squared operation. And you've got a second time derivative as well. You've got a, a relationship between these two terms which has an association of being 1 over the speed squared. And that is associated with wave solutions of this equation. As we know, in vacuum, waves will propagate with a speed c0. And then on the right-hand side, for, as some more foreshadowing, we see charge density and current density, each with one of the fundamental constants, epsilon naught and mu naught, one in the denominator, one in the numerator. OK, what the master E equation is about is saying, let's follow a different path. Let's go from the Maxwell equations for E and B. And let's see what sort of equation we get here for E and for B that resemble this sort of equation. And as we're about to see, the relationship is very close. You're going to have a same sort of operation over here. And you're going to have a row and a J on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to start in a very similar place to where we started for deriving the potential equations. We're going to start with a curl equation. And we're specifically going to start with the curl of the electric field. This is a Maxwell equation. The reason we're doing this is we saw in the previous example that there were del squareds happening. So if we take the curl of this curl, we will get a del squared. So let's go ahead and do that. We take the curl of both sides and we get the curl of the curl of E on the left. And then we get the negative curl of this time derivative of B. And as we do, as far as I'm aware, everywhere in this course, we can always exchange time and space derivatives. And that allows us to write this as negative time derivative of curl of B. All right, well, this guy, there's a vector identity for that. When we plug in for that vector identity, we get the gradient of the divergence of E. That's one way of. This is a second derivative of E. This is a second derivative of E of a different flavor, minus this operator called del squared also operating on E. And I'm just going to put a big yellow square around this to say, let's pay attention to this. This is something that we need to make sure we understand what it means. At the moment, Divergence is something we've studied. The gradient of a scalar field is something we understand. But we don't know what del squared of a vector really means, even though we used it in the derivation for the vector potential equation in the past. Today, we're really going to think about what it means. So what does this equal? It equals the time derivative of curl of b. But the curl of b is itself given by a Maxwell equation of its own. So this is equal to the negative time derivative of, well, the curl of B has two terms in it. 
So I'll just remind you that's a Maxwell equation, ME. It's specifically Maxwell equation four. And so the first term is mu naught j. And the second term, I'll choose to write the constants as one over C naught squared times dE dt. I'll notice in passing that here, of course, was Maxwell equation three for the curl of E. Got Maxwell equation four for the curl of B. And here's Maxwell equation one for the divergence of electric field. So this term here can become the gradient of rho over epsilon naught. This stays minus del squared of E. And on the right side, let's take some derivatives here. We have minus mu naught dj dt. And we have minus one over C naught squared. And now we get a second time derivative of E. And now we just gather terms. We were expecting to see, as you may recall, a del squared, a second time derivative of E. And here's our second space derivative of E. Let's bring them together onto this side. And we now have del squared of E. We'll make that one positive. They have the same sign on opposite sides of the equation. They have opposite sides on the same side of the equation. So here's our second time derivative term. And this looks exactly like the left-hand side of the potential equations, except now it's del squared and second time derivative squared of E instead of, of the, the scalar and vector potentials. What terms go on the right? Here's one of them. Gradient of rho over epsilon naught. And this turns out to be a plus sign. And mu naught dj dt. And this thing is called the master E equation by me. The reason I call this the master E equation is because it applies in all situations, not just in vacuum, but inside of a glass, inside of a metal, inside of a birefringent material, and we will be simplifying this equation all throughout the semester. But for right now, we want to consider the specific case of air or, or vacuum, where rho equals zero, there's no charge, and there's no charge, there's no current density or charge density. Well, in that particular case, then we would get this simplification the left-hand side stays the same, the right-hand side becomes zero. And this equation here, this is called the 3D wave equation. And the reason why you want to be learning about this now is that one of the solutions to the 3D wave equation is the plane wave. So this form, when the equations are in air, are important because in optics, a lot of the time, we have light flying through air or empty space. And in such space, plane waves mathematically solve this equation, as we'll be studying. And I also want to emphasize again this del squared over here. So del squared of a vector field E the definition of that, triple equal sign, the definition of that is to take the del squared of the x component of the field and associate that with an x hat vector, do the same thing for y and the same thing for z. This is a difficult concept, but this is the mathematical meaning of the del squared operation, and I encourage you to study this for a second here and pause and make sure you know, look up what del squared of a scalar is if you don't know it by heart, because 
This is not a single operation. This is not just the second x derivative of ex, the second y derivative of ey, second z derivative of ez. This involves second derivatives with respect to x and y and z. That's what del squared means, and that's the important thing to remember. We should be strengthening this in the course during lecture time. So in summary, we've got this boxed equation here, which is the master E equation. And the operations on the left-hand side, when we're in air, which is what we care about for today, lead to a very simple, simplified form to a wave equation. And in order to plug in actual plane wave expressions to this wave equation, you have to be aware that del squared is a, a shorthand that means doing these three things when you break this equation into its three scalar equations, there will be a del squared of ex in one equation, ey in another, and ez in the third.